Well, Max, we have never met before, but of course I feel like, as many of your fans, that we know you from all those Barney Millers. Uh -huh. uh, when that ended, uh, was it a relief for you, or uh, did you kind of hate to see it end? It was both. You know, I, I personally was, I think, more ready than some of the other people for it to end. Uh, which only has meant that I think later I've experienced some of the sadness that they were more aware of at the time. And, uh, but it was time for us to, to wrap it up. We had a really great circle and, and I think we all feel good about what we did and it's time to go on and start at the beginning with something else. And of course uh, now you have DC Cab, which you might not have been able to do, I guess, if you'd That's had right. Barney. That's right. So, um, uh, what was it like for you making this movie? Because you're <laughs> such a, a a company, you're a rep company of zanies, really. Yeah. 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 No, noble scallywags, I think that's <laughs> what. Um, it was great. You know, it was uh, um, uh, such an eclectic uh, bunch of um, backgrounds. And you know, you've got guys who are into into bodybuilding, which is in a real pursuit of mind over matter, although a lot of people don't realize that, but it really is mind over, over matter to actually change the structure of your, your body in such an enormous way. And this is quite a, you know, Gary Boosie coming in with a film and strong music background and the comedians who come in with their real sense of, 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 of timing, but in a one-on-one -on -one way with the audience and, and learning to, to trust being in a scene with, with another person and kind of forget the audience forget that they're there, you know, learning that difference. And it was, it was great. It was crazy. The main glue, I think, that held it together was the crew. We had a great crew. So while all of us were cutting up and screwing around and just acting like a bunch of monkeys, and Joel, the uh, Schumacher directing it, understood that there was a certain kind of uh, hell-bent for leather atmosphere that had to pervade, you know, he let a lot of that go on and the crew somehow kept managing to get get it together to do another take or get wherever they had to get to, you know, so. Did you finish on time and within budget? I think so, you know, uh, uh, it certainly wasn't Heaven's Gate. <laughs> 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 was, Let's hope not like for your sake. <laughs> Now, when you, when you all were on location in, in Washington, D.C., uh -huh. uh, what was that like? I mean, ap you would all attract, I'm sure, enormous crowds, especially with T and some of those people there. Well, I, I don't think so. I mean, the, the main crowds, T, of course, uh, right at that point was going, you know, full on with the National Enquirer, and he had a People magazine cover, and, and there were announcements made that we were shooting, and we were shooting a film shooting the film in parts of Washington that are normally not acknowledged. There's a lot of this film that, while it may deal uh, very humorously and maybe some people might argue too lightly with certain things, you know, uh, I don't know if we really deal with, with Rastas or Vietnam vets or as, as seriously as we might, but the fact is we acknowledge that as part of the world and a lot of films don't. You know, they go to Washington and you don't see Washington. So when we showed up making a film there, well, I'd, we drew crowds, and it was um, it was exciting in a way. You know, I think the responsibility of it fell mostly on on T because he was so visible at the time and and out there and and you know connected to a lot of the neighborhoods where we were shooting. Um, you have to have, but that's part of it. You know, it, it, I I've seen that happen. You know, I mean, the Fonz has shown up at supermarkets and drawn thousands and thousands of people, so that's... Would you like that kind of adulation and fame, seriously? I don't think so. I mean, it's just, it's something that goes on. Um, but it makes, puts a lot of pressure on the person that's at the center of that, you know, and I don't, I find, I like being around it or connected to it, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but I, I, I like watching what's going on. So, in your career, early career, when you were doing all kinds of different jobs, I presume, did you ever ever drive a cab? No. 
There was only one time when I first moved to San Francisco and I couldn't get a piano bar job because you had to spend a certain amount of time in the city before the musicians union would let you work in that city to keep everybody from coming there and taking the jobs, you know. And um, there was a point where I, was, I almost became a cab driver and then I got another job. So. Do you, in your memory of, of riding cabs, has there ever been one cab ride that's memorable for you? Because I remember one in my own experience. Have you ever had an untoward experience? Yeah, but I would not <laughs> tell it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a lady cab driver? <laughs> it was just a bizarre experience. But, um, but cabs are something that everybody shares in common. It's a kind of... Uh, a kind of a um, generic experience, you know. Uh, uh, everybody is, something happens when you get in a cab and in that space and everybody can relate to it. You know, so you're sound, kind of suspended from the rest of life for a few moments. Yes. So. Well, it, it's been fun talking with you, Max. Uh -huh. And um, uh, it, I, the movie's a hoot. I just hope that it, it yeah? does well. Yeah? Did you like it? I, I haven't I, seen I, it yet. So. You have not no. seen it? I've seen maybe half of it, you know, when we were looping and doing things like that, but I haven't really seen the film together, so you liked it, huh? Uh, I think it's a hoot. Uh, the only disappointment I have is that it's rated R, which eliminates a lot of the young kids, and they would just adore it. They would have such uh -huh. a good time with it. But, well, that's uh, interesting that they... they did you all know happen. it was going to be an R at the time? I suppose they could have figured it out with some of the language that's in yeah. there, you know. It's real interesting what's happening with ratings, you know. The whole thing they've gone through with Scarface, uh, Seems like the first time that that X rating for a uh, for violence. Yeah. I don't think there's anything in it that kids don't hear in terms of language or anything like that. But um, that's for sure. You know. Well, they'll anyway, get in anyway. We'll see how it does. Kids, Next, you know, nice I'll talking just with make you. them try harder. <laughs> nice to meet you too. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing because the kids that is in the schoolyard. There's no way you can, you know, no matter what your family standards are. Uh -huh. No way you can keep kids from hearing that uh -huh. stuff. No way. Okay, uh, do you want me to cheat the child little face over there? Just program. smile. Oh, okay. <laughs> One. And sound. For you, Max, what was it like being on the set with this sea of zanies? When you were shooting on location in Washington, D.C., did you have a lot of problems with crowds gathering around? Surely there must have been a lot of people because of Mr. T. You know, he's such a phenomenon. Were you glad to see Barney Miller end? In your life at any time, have you ever driven a cab? Have you ever had any sort of unusual experience as a passenger in a taxi? <laughs> yeah. Was it a lady cab driver? I think that'll get it. Thank you.